I'm not gonna lie, I've been putting off doing this video for a while now, only because I have so much information I wanna share with you in regards to fat loss. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my key tips when it comes to making dieting easier. This is everything that I incorporated when I lost over 50 pounds over the course of nine months. The big problem I see with fat loss and regaining the weight back when it comes to fat loss is that a lot of people tend to go toward these crazy extreme fad diets and they cut their calories fast. If this sounds like you, comment below. You try a new diet, you cut your calories, you're doing a lot of cardio, then you start getting a lot of cravings. After you lose the weight, you end up going back and reverting back to old habits. And then next time you address your fat loss, it's not as easy to lose that weight and you don't know where to go next. So you go back to that extreme diet. This constant yo-yo, that is not what we want. So we're just gonna dive right into it, guys. These are my top tips to make dieting easier so that you're able to get long-term sustainable results, stop the yo-yoing, and create a lifestyle of staying lean year-round. The first tip to making dieting easier is going to be ditching the old school six meals a day and dropping down to three meals a day for fat loss. I'm gonna link a whole video that I did addressing this and it goes deep into information, so I highly recommend checking it out. But I do wanna hit a few key points on why I eat three meals a day versus six. First off, six meals a day, guys, it is not gonna boost your metabolism. There's actually a lot of benefits to allowing your body plenty of time without snacking in between your meals. The first one is you have your insulin in your glucagon. Your insulin gets spiked when you're having your meal, and then you need around 90 minutes for this to actually start stabilizing and glowing down for your glucagon to turn on. That is your fat burner. So by giving your body plenty of time in between the meals, you allow for the insulin to go up, our fat burner glucagon to go down. Also, another key aspect is something called our migrating motor complex. This is your MMC pathway. And again, in order for it to run its full cycle, it comes on around 90 minutes after a meal, and it lasts till around 240 minutes. So that basically, it sweeps out the bad bacteria in your gut and it acts to kind of help with your gut microbiome. Again, has a big effect on food cravings and so forth. The very last aspect that I want to address is our mindset. A lot of people feel like they need to have six meals a day to have fat loss. It's going to boost their metabolism. But sometimes what I've realized personally when I needed to make six meals a day and I needed to hit X amount of calories and macronutrients at each meal, I have work, I have life, I have so many things going on and so do my clients. And it almost created food for thought on my mind all of the time and more stress and anxiety around food. This is supposed to be a lifestyle. So by cutting down to three meals a day, I was able to actually take the time to be present with my food, to have a whole food with all my micronutrients and macronutrients in it, and I wasn't constantly thinking, oh my God, I have to have my food here, I have to bring my food here, it's time to eat, it's time to this. So it created more of a sense of calm around food. So the first tip is dropping down from six meals a day and going to three meals a day for fat loss, and highly recommend checking out that video because I go deep into information for you guys. My second tip to making dieting easier is gonna be these two key macronutrients. So we wanna make sure that we are prioritizing number one, our protein, and number two, our fiber. And I'm gonna dive into why and the effects that it has on our body now and helping with fat loss. So first off, guys, protein is a major macronutrient helping with repair and rebuilding of your muscle fiber tissues. During different ages, as we get older, if we're training harder, our body's need for protein, even especially on fat loss when you're in a caloric deficit, is very important. I'm gonna link a whole video that I did on how to find out your protein and calculate it based off of your age, activity level, and even if you're vegetarian or vegan, above for you guys. But in simplicity, making sure you're getting enough protein in your diet helps with two major things. Number one, it's gonna help give your body all of the amino acids so that if you're training hard, you're able to repair and rebuild that muscle. So you're able to maintain your lean muscle mass on a diet. 
when you are on a diet, guys, you're not building muscle. You want to do everything you can with your training and your nutrition to be maintaining that muscle, which is why protein is key. Also, protein plays a huge role in our satiety hormones. That is your feeling of fullness. So making sure at each of your meals to get around 20 to 30 grams of protein is going to help you feel fuller longer, satiated, cut those cravings. And also, little side note, protein has a 20% thermogenic effect on food. So it takes around 20% of those calories to burn it, to break down your protein into the amino acids. The second one we're addressing is our fiber. And so many clients come to me, I have them tracking their fiber and they're getting maybe five to 10 grams a day. The recommended dosage for a woman is around 20 to 25 grams a day and for males, 30 to 35. Fiber, especially soluble fiber, helps feed that good gut microbiome and has a big role when it comes to your digestive process. Because fiber is not easily broken down, it slows down your digestive process and this helps to stabilize your blood sugar levels and it helps again with that feeling of satiety. So by making sure you're getting your daily protein intake and hitting your daily fiber goals, which is 20 to 25 grams for my females and 30 to 35 for my males, it's gonna help with your hormones, that feeling of fullness after a meal and even cravings. And one key little point I want to put here, if you guys start tracking your fiber and you realize you're only getting maybe, you know, 10 grams a day, don't just try to jump up to 20, 25, take it slow and make sure you are getting it coming from whole food sources and drinking plenty of fluids. If you go too fast on that fiber intake and don't get enough water, it can cause some GI issues like gas, bloating, or even constipation. The third tip to make dieting easier is stop swapping out your meals for shakes. So hear me out on this, guys. You may think when it comes to protein, protein is protein. As long as you're getting in your daily amount, whether it be from five shakes a day or whole foods, it's the same thing. But that is not the truth when it comes to your hormones, um, your cravings, satiety, all of that. So here's the deal. We got a shake, we got a meal. When you're having a meal, you're going to be getting in all of your micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber. These are essential for your hormones, your gut microbiome, your energy levels, all of that. They play a huge role in all the cellular functions in your body. Now, if you are swapping those out for the easy protein shakes that have added vitamins and minerals to them that your body is not recognizing, okay? Then on top of that, they're void of your fiber. They don't have all of your micronutrients, the antioxidants in there. There's, there's a little bit of a, you know, a way out on this. So I like to focus on not doing more than one shake a day when on fat loss. That way I have my easy shake to do post-workout to help with my recovery. But then the rest of my meals, I focus on getting my protein from whole food sources and getting my um, whole foods with it. My fourth tip to make dieting easier is going to be stop making healthy versions of these dessert meals. And we've all done it. All of a sudden you're making a protein ice cream and then you're making the protein ice cream for two meals. And then you're trying to make, you know, this mug cake and this dessert here and your almond flour and this keto treat. And the truth is guys, your cravings and habits, if you want to change them, keep it simple. Focus on whole foods. You can make a very healthy smoothie. And as a matter of fact, I have so many healthy recipes under my recipe playlist that I'll link above for you guys that are gonna nourish your body with the fiber, the macronutrients, going for our gut, our hormones. And these play a big role, again, guys, on cutting cravings, keeping you satisfied on a diet, and not making it feel like a diet, making it more feel like a balance in lifestyle but it does take time to reset and get rid of these cravings. So give it a month, give it two months, and just try different things out. My fifth tip to make dieting easier is going to be ditch the scale. So if you're the type of person that was like me, the scale would totally mess with my head. If that scale on fat loss, and a lot of my clients are the same way, if the scale goes up, they think they did something wrong. 
They think that they're not losing weight, they get more stressed. If they're stressed out, they're gonna retain water, their digestive system's gonna be thrown off, and fat loss is not gonna be in the works. Let's just face it, when you're stressed out, that's not optimal for fat loss. By ditching the scale and focusing on instead, progress pictures, waist measurements, how clothes are fitting, and even looking at things like, am I getting stronger in the gym? These are simple ways to track your progress and what I like to do is I do pictures around four weeks apart. So you may not see a difference from one week, but if you compare your four weeks um, versus your week one, then you could start seeing those changes if you are on that right caloric deficit. So if you're the type of person where the scale messes with your head, then ditch the scale, pictures, progress, um, do pictures, you can do waist measurements, and look at how your clothes are fitting, guys. And remember this, the scale can fluctuate on a daily basis, guys, based off of, did you have more sodium? Did you eat close to bed last night? Did you have a refeed day with more carbohydrates? Did you, you know, were you stressed out? Were you on your period? On my period, the scale can go up, you know, four pounds, but it always goes back down. So it's just easier to get the scale out of your head sometime, focus on, healthy lifestyle changes, your sleep, your stress, putting good food in your body and enjoying the training. A whole thing I want you guys to remember when it comes to fat loss and getting long-term sustainable results, it's not about I need to cut my calories fast and go to an extreme diet. If you can't see yourself following these lifestyle changes with the cardio, with the macros, with or just with all of it, with the diet, if you can't see yourself you know, a year, five years from now following that, your results are not gonna be sustainable. With my clients, what I like to do is I like to bridge the gaps. I don't just give them, okay, hit X amount of calories and do this training. I work with my clients with weekly check-ins. That way, I look at things like our stress, our sleep, different things that come up each week so that I can make small adjustments so that over the course of maybe working for me three, six months, we're able to get our sleep on point, our stress levels down, change different habits throughout our day to kind of bridge the gap so you're able to have more time for you. And then trying to swap out different food ideas so that you're able to figure out what your triggers are when it comes to bloating and digestion. And when we bridge these gaps, people just start feeling better. And when you feel better, you're, like your brain feels better when your gut feels better. When you start seeing the results, you're more inclined to do better. And this is small changes and consistency in weight loss. So no extremes, guys. Don't think you need to lose five, six pounds a week when it comes to fat loss. Start slow, make small changes, and if you guys need help, I will put all my information below. I work with over 700 clients all around the world, and it's truly my passion of mine. And my whole motto is we have to make small changes so you guys can get sustainable results. Yo-yo dieting and start making lifestyle changes. I hope you guys found these tips helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Love you guys. Make sure to subscribe, and I will see you next week.